Shalom, shalom, chaberim, shalom. This is Yadin, this is Ras Ayadonis Tafari, the Lion of Judah Society, LOJS.org, Ras Tafari Podcast Radio, Ras Tafari Sabbatical. So, here, here, here. You can check more in the descriptions, you know, some of the links and what we have offering, and also where we, where we reason together and also deal with the teaching of Ha Torah. Now, we got to catch, um, there was a debate, I think JJ7000 was debating with um, a sister by the name of uh, Nepal Shada. I hope I'm saying your name correctly. We're not going to do as some other Hebrews, uh, self-professed Hebrews and Israelites did. We're a Rastafari Israelite. And in fact, Rastafari from the very root made that connection with Israel and Israelite. But just to touch on this point concerning the Elohim. The Elohim in Genesis, and this um, this um, video. It's a short a short video. I think it's on the Black News 102 platform, Sanetta's platform, where he's basically saying that these um, these itch ass uh, Hebrews are, are lying on on their queen on their queen um, Nepal because they said that she says that um, God lied, but actually according to what she said, um, Elohim lied. She was going into the narrative that we find in the first book of Moses, or the first book of the Bible, first book of HaTorah, but in the English called Genesis. Genesis chapter 3, right? And I'll say the famous or the infamous, depends on your perspective, you know, the narrative concerning um, Adam, Hawa, and the Nahash. Since Sanetta seems to have made the distinction in the particular um, video, you know, kind of a quick edit, cut, uh, split, uh, split and splice video, and everything very, very interesting. And kind of in a, in a drop, you kind of get the fuller context of the controversy or the controversy right there. But I've heard a little bit of what um, Nepal had said elsewhere. And the first thing I said to even uh, Isha Shali or said, Eshet Shelly, Eshet Isha, woman, wife, Eshet Shelly, my wife. I even said, you know, this all reminds me of some of the different Gnostics. I say different Gnostics because some people believe that all Gnostics were like all the same thing. And it's like people say, well, like all Christians are the same kind of Christian, but then you see Christian fighting Christian or all of anyone is the same kind of thing, you know, in a generalization. But they say, it's said that the devil, it is said that the devil's in the details. Now, her perspective is a perspective that was the perspective of some of the pseudo-Gnostics, some of the secular Gnostics, and some of even the, the Christian or maybe, well, any Yehudi would really kind of know. Because once you say Elohim, you're taking it out of the framework of the KJV, the King James Version. Now, what people often do is they pick out a name, you know, whether they'll say Yahweh, as they say, Yahweh, or they'll say Elohim, as they say, but not look in the fuller context of the Hebrew, of the Hebrew. And, and listening to her reasoning is very interesting. And on one level, I say, wow, it's um, interesting that kind of finally this point kind of comes more to the forefront so that more ones than ones can get to. I can say get to be exposed to it and you know choose you know some would say yeah this is that's what I've always thought or or no yay or nay you know so this becomes now um, a popular point that's now in the black con consciousness community that can be more readily discussed by people because now it has come to the forefront in other words so about that um, we are I say we're happy. What well, we're happy. Happy is not a feeling, it's a state of mind, but it's interesting. And therefore, we're responding right here. So we're going to ask this as we ask in another video is Garfield, Garfield Reed, is he right? And just touch on a, a few of the points that have been articulated or brought forth, right? Is um, Nepal Shaddai, is she correct? Did the Elohim, as she says, or quote God, did the Elohim of Genesis chapter 3, did he lie? No, it's who lied. Was it the serpent? The, in the Hebrew we say Nahash, Nahash, right? Was it the Nahash? Did the Nahash lie? Or did the Elohim lie? Now, 
it's interesting because often ones and ones, as we said before, when you pick out the name Elohim or you pick out the name Yahweh or Yahweh, and then you go back to KJV, you know, right there, what you're doing is, in a sense, adulterating. You're adulterating it. Not that a person cannot do that, you know. One might not choose to say Lord or God or so forth and so on and prefer to speak in the, the names that are found, you know, within the Hebrew. But by not going into the Hebrew itself or having a good moray, a moray is one name for teacher, a good rabbi, Robeno Yeshua HaMoshiach, I and I rabbi, but the rabbi of rabbis, our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, just to put that there on the record right there, but not having a good, um, a good, not just a, a teacher so much, but good teaching, let's put it like that, a good teaching, because you can get good teaching perhaps from more than one person, and they are still teaching the same teaching. But when you start to like adulterate it, you start to confuse yourself. And it sounds good, it sounds nice. And just speaking to the sister Nepal, it sounds nice. And some of us have already been there, maybe more than two decades ago, when we got into some of the Gnostic, some of the Gnostic Gospels and Gnostic teachings. And one thing I was always interested and is that a lot of people, when they get into the Gnostics, they think that the Gnostics was like one group that, that all of them had kind of one kind of, I won't say opinion, but what ones didn't recognize, they were secular Gnostics, in other words, ones who are more Hellenistic, in a sense. It's not because they spoke Greek. See, we have to get off of that, you know, because ones speak Greek or this might be written in Greek, like some of the other, you know, ones who call themselves Hebrews and, and some other ones who are like overzealous. You know, they'll say, oh, we're only dealing with the Hebrew. We're not dealing with the Greek, like, you know, one's the Old Testament only or something like that on that particular level. But what happens there when you do that and then you start speaking English, you're speaking English. And then when you identify that those peoples in the first century time, especially of the Brit Hadash or the New Testament, were our people, like the Yehudi, the Jews, even the black Jews of um, the first century time, the time of the the Moshiach, the Messiah, Jesus Christos, Jesus Christ, you're doing the same thing. So you, you are condemning, in a sense, what you're doing. And I'm not speaking to Nepal on this particular point, right, on this point right here, just about the whole thing about the Greek, you know, because we try to just drop a little word in on that. See how hypocritical it is to say, well, we black and brown people, we're the Hebrews and the Israelites, and our language is Hebrew. And then if we go to say New Testament or, you know, and find some things written in Greek by our people, our self-identified people who are Hebrews um, and, and Israelites or Judahites, Judeans, or in the English parlance, they call Jews, we're doing the very same thing, you know, that we're condemning. You know, I think the script, there's a, there's a verse, there's a couple of verses for that that talks about, you know, um, you know, like condemning the thing that you do, in a sense. But let's touch on this whole garden, the garden of, of, of Aden thing, right? First point is the point about Elohim, is the point about Elohim. Let me just ask a couple questions and perhaps we'll get into another follow-up and get into more detail, right? Do you know that there is the Hebrew Trinity, the Hebrew Trinity? And we said the Hebrew Trinity, this is bringing out the Tetragrammaton, the true meaning of the Tetragrammaton Hebraically, the Hebrew Trinity. In fact, Robeno, Yeshua HaMoshiach, Rabboni, Jesus Christ, even points it when he says to baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. People ask about the divine feminine in the scripture. Did you know? Next question. Did you know that the divine feminine is right there in the beginning? In fact, we find it in the first word in the Hebrew. In the Hebrew, let me emphasize the Hebrew. This does not mean that we should ignore or not utilize the King James Version of the Bible or the, the translations, but we should not deep end. We should make them stepping stones and not stumbling blocks. And then when we take a name like, say, Elohim, the name Elohim is a, becomes a generic name within the Scripture that can apply to the true good, the true God, the true power, Hailehem, can apply it to the true, and it can also be applied to the false. 
But how do we know and discern the difference? Well, sometimes in translations we can see where it clearly is speaking about like the other people, Elohim, the Elohim of the, you know, the gods of the, the, the Mitzrayim, the B'nai, B'nai Mitzrayim of the Egyptians or the gods of the Canaanites. Or the, Another point, Israelites are not Canaanites. And we're going to prove this. Israelites are not Canaanites. Canaanites are the historical progenitor of the Indo-European, or we could say so-called white people. Let's just put that there. We're going to put that there on the, on the record right there. And I know there's a lot of modern-day consensus of scholarship that says that, and this new scholarship is based on 1948. If you know what occurred in 1948, you'll recognize why they have come up with all these so-called, quote, new discoveries and everything else. It's a trick. It's a trap. Let's get on this Elohim. Let's touch on the Elohim for a moment. So Elohim, yes, there is, it's a plural because of the Yod mean, but here's the thing about the Hebrew Trinity. When we look at the Hebrew, when we're speaking of Yahuwah, HaKadosh Baruch Hu Baruch Hashem, the Holy One, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, blessed be He, Baruch Hashem, blessed be the name Yod He Wehe. Yod Hey Wehe -he, or Y H W H, which some would say Yahweh. When we're speaking about the true God, right, or the true power, that's the more better, you know, way of interpreting it. We speak of the true power, and we look at the Hebrew, even though it is a word that could be considered just in a basic um, um, Hebrew kind of grammatical sense. It can be considered and construed as a plural as applied to other gods, like of other nations. Of other nations, when we say Elohim of other nations, we're talking about plurality. When we speak about Elohim of Yisrael, the true El, Elohe Yisrael, we are speaking about the Hebrew Trinity. We're speaking of the Hebrew Trinity. We'll get into more of that. There's a very good book, one and one should check out. It's called The Jewish Trinity by Yoel Natan. It kind of brings out some of the Israelite of Ethiopia and the true Tawahido or Orthodox, the ancient manuscript teaching of the Israelites of Ethiopia regarding um, Kedu Selase or Hashelush ha, ha Kadosh, the Holy Trinity. But whenever we are reading the Hebrew and is speaking of Yod He Wehe, Yod Ha Wehe, is speaking about Yahweh, Yahweh, right? Whenever we're speaking of Yahweh, because even Yahweh, we have Yahweh, we have Yahweh, and we have Yahweh. And this is proven even in the scripture, right? He who was, he who is, he who, he who will be. So when he said to Moshe, Ehye, Asher, Ehye. Ehye is the first person in, in the Hebrew sense. If I say Ehye, Right? And we can find it and we can show you elsewhere in the scriptures and the translation where like I became, you know, I be as such and such. Right. And that is Ehye. Some of the baby Hebrew, Hebrew is like speakers that speak about the Lashan Kadash that speak like we only have one or two vowels. They, they speak Hebrew in a vowel deficient sense. They say ah, Ahaya, Ahya or Ahaya, but really properly pointed. Right. Eh yeah, eh yeah, right? Eh yeah. And if you say, oh, that's the way the white Jews, the European Jews. Did you know that before, um, who's that? Uh, um, what's the name? Um, Eliphas? What's his name? The Halevi, the one who they credit with um, uh, modern Hebrew, right? Do you know that they studied the Gutters and the Ethiopic because the Ethiopic or the Gutters of Ethiopia is a pure is considered a pure Shemitic language so in order in order for them to even to reconstruct Hebrew let me just finish this point in order for them to reconstruct Hebrew in the modern sense as a spoken language and even understand it in a better sense they had to look at another language that they call a dead language but it's still used by the priests and some of the higher clerics and some of the higher worshipers of Ethiopia, the Israelites, those from that Judeo-Christian root, still utilize the Gutters, what's called the Gutters. Not Gies, that's the Western Gentile, right? English, you know, is ruining black people's mentality, but the Gutters, right? The Gutters. In order to get 
the vowel, not just the vowel pointing, but even to define certain archaic words that are found in Hebrew manuscripts. There's some words in, in the Hebrew that are only in one or two, maybe two places. Some words are only found in like one place in the Hebrew manuscript. Right? While we have other words, maybe a few places, but the real sense of what it really means is a little bit, is a little bit, um, it's a little bit unknown and was unknown to many translators. My proof point is we have Strong's Concordance. Strong's Concordance for the Old Testament the Hebrew is based on the Gesenius or Gesenius Lex, the, the, the Gesenius Lexicon. Gesenius or Gesenius, as some would say, G E S E N I U S, if I'm correct, Gesenius, some would say Gesenius, the, the G and the J sound, the G and the J sound and the G, right? But anyway, that's all English stuff. We're just pointing out some things that are English that we should know and just keep it pushing. But the Gesenius, in his lexicon of the Hebrew language, that is the backing, it's like the, the resource and reference document for the Strong's Concordance has a plethora, that means nuff nuff, right, boku, much much, nuff nuff, as nuff nuff words that are brought out and properly defined by them going to the Ethiopic. See, I have to say this on the record because ones will say, oh, you're just saying that's what the white Jews, or that's how the white Jews, the white Jews, the white Jews, but that you don't even know that the white so-called Jews, the European Ashkenazi or other Jews, but mainly the European Jews, Ashkenazi Jews, that some of their higher scholars have studied and were studying the Ethiopic documents and going into Ethiopia to study the Ethiopic documents to refine their knowledge of the Hebrew. This is why when in Operation Solomon and he brought over a whole bunch of um, the Beta Israel, some say the tribe of Dan, but you know the Beta Israel or, or the Israelites of Ethiopia, some of those Israelites, Latter-day Israelites of Ethiopia, they had one plane full of the people, men, women, and children, and they had another plane full of the manuscripts. Once the plane landed, the people were so happy, elated to get there, then the manuscripts were taken to Hebrew University and sunk in the sub-basements, you know, the sub-basements they have of the Hebrew University, never to be seen again, and you don't have to take my word for it, though my word is true, you'll find that even many of their, their memheran, their rabbis, memheran, their scholars, of Torah and others have been pleading and many of the people have been pleading for their manuscripts that they gathered up when they were going to make the so-called exodus right to um, Israel but that's another point where is the true Israel right in fact you have the true Jerusalem the real Jerusalem is actually in Western Arabia and the so-called New Jerusalem is where we are at over there you know, within the Levant today. But that's a, another related point. My point here is about linguistics and language. And I have to say this at the outset, because in listening to Nepal Shaddai's point, you know, concerning, first of all, like the Elohim, there it was just one of the many Elohim. So she's saying, well, this Elohim here in chapter 3 is maybe, maybe she believes this, we didn't hear a fuller point, because the fuller point wasn't there in the clip that we saw. The clip let us know that she believes that there were different Elohims kind of running around, you know, and there was one of them here in chapter 3, and that Elohim had lied, right, had lied to um, Adam where Hewan or Hava, Hawa, you know, concerning the tree. Well, first of all, can we touch on this right here? I mean, we're going to use this as a you know, the screensaver. We'll like to get into some more pics of the garden and, you know, do it like that. But let's just kind of just go through with this right here. First of all, back to the point, the linguistics points about Hebrew. Once you're going to say, if you're going to say, well, the God over there, okay, God. But when you say Elohim, you have to understand what you're talking about Hebraically, right? And it's not so easy to kind of like, um, you know, fall back to the English, Right, the, the English, when you start to get into the Hebrew, please get into the Hebrew. First point is that Elohim can be interpreted to mean gods, and in many places it is interpreted to be gods. Right? Yet the Elohim in the beginning is a a singular plurality. A singular. And how do we know this? Well, we know this grammatically from Hebrew. Whenever the Elohim of the Yod Hey Weh Hey, the Tetragrammaton Y H W H, 
Yahweh, as some would say, right, is being referred to almost always, almost always, and in these sections in Genesis especially, the verb is always singular, is a male singular. Whenever we're speaking of other people's Elohim or others, other gods of other nations, the God constructs or what have you, their Elohim is always plural. Their Elohim is always plural. Thus, sometimes the translator would translate when speaking of Elohim concerning the, the power of Israel, they would say he, right, and translate it as he. And when speaking and or as God, they'll translate as God, you know, singular. Even though the word could be and is, in a sense, God. See, there's something about the Hebrew that people don't understand, right? When speaking of the true God, it doesn't always conform to traditional, um, how can we say, the Hebrew scripture, the Masoretic and the Hebrew scripture doesn't always conform to traditional, um, um, the dikduk, dikduk um, grammar. Right, and even in some senses, the the binyanim, the binyanim is the patterns. They are patterns, so we can get different tenses like, like um, I ran, I run, I will run. You know, like the different senses, past, present, future. You know, and the different nuances. There are nuances of the linguistics and language, like they call it like grammar, like learning different grammar. It's like black people, our people, and my people sometimes would say, especially the Judahites here, the so-called Negroes here from the Geechee and Gullah, that's, that's my maternal side. You know, they'll say like, thunk. You know, well, you know what you thunk, or I thunk something. Now people say, oh, that's bad grammar. Right? But really, in English, it can be said. Because when somebody uses the word thunk, right, it is basically one way of saying the past tense of think. But because many people are under this um, wasp Christianity, this wasp mindset, this Gentile, this white Anglo-Saxon Protestant mindset, and they say, um, no, we don't say thunk, we say thought. We say thought. See, the Hebrew is like that. The Hebrew is like where it, it would have think, thinking, it would have thought, but then it would also have thunk. So this will mean, mean that, that Elohim, when speaking of the true God, the true power, HaKadosh Baruch Hu Baruch Hashem, the Holy One, blessed be He, blessed be the name. When speaking of Him, it speaks of Him in the singular, though using the noun in the plural. So it doesn't always conform. Like when you're reading the script, it becomes very clear. Uh, this is kind of hard to say to people who are monolingual. We got a lot of monolingual scholars that want to talk about what the Hebrews and the ancients thought, and they haven't gotten into the thought of the Hebrew. So they're thoughtless to what the Hebrew is really saying. And they are deep ending, depending on the translations and the translators. And in other words, the translators are becoming like their Elohim, their gods, right? And these and these kind of little goofy academics and and uh, and scholars out there. Right, that would do all this kind of stuff, but they never really get into the Hebrew. Maybe they'll pick a word out like Elohim and say, We well, you know Elohim is with the Y and the M, the Yod meme at the end is plural, it's a plural word. Like we say, heavens, Shemayim, right? It's a plural word. Uh, and let me say this too it's a plural masculine word, it's a plural masculine noun. See, this is very important to state on the record right so when we get to genesis chapter 3 in genesis chapter 3 it mentions the yahweh yahweh elohim yahweh elohim some may say right and when the like i'm reading from the humash the english right here so it should be like the kjv but if it's different that the reasons come reading the english i have the hebrew here because when we read the english we look at the hebrew and see if it really brings out or if there's more there's usually more that cannot be brought out in a simple translation for a simple english speakers monolingual english speakers so it says now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, this is another point about the whole Adam and Eve sort of thing right there. 
we're not one of those, based on our studies and based on the Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit, one of those who believe that, you know, a man and the humanity fell all because it was all the woman's fault. Right? And this is not caping to the, to the woman or, or femininity, so to speak. Right? Because we already told you that in the very beginning, the divine feminine is in the first word. The divine feminine is found in the very first word. In the very first word of Genesis, we touched on it in another vlog. I think one of the recent videos prior to this that we've uploaded on, on this particular channel right here. But we'll do a video just on the divine feminine in the first word of Genesis, the, the the Hebrew first word of Genesis. Let me just remember that 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 name right there, the Hebrew divine feminine in the very first words of Genesis. Right? So we're not one of those who believe. We believe that, the, that not even believe, we know from the study. Right? We have believed it, then we studied it, and then we got the facts and the evidence and the documentation, and now we know that it was not the womb man's fault. That who lied in the garden? Let's ask the question, who lied in the garden? It was the woman. Well, the serpent and the woman lied. Right? The serpent and the woman lied. Now people say, well, how you say this? How you say this? Because he was listening to one of the Sardinetta, he had someone on there and he was asking different Hebrews and Israelites a question. And this is where we recognize, wow, these, these, these brothers, you know, haven't really studied deep enough, right? As Sizzler Kalunji says that, you know, English will ruin, you know, English is ruin black people's mentality. Mm. She lied because God didn't say nothing to her, according to the Bible, according to the narrative of the Bible. God did not say nothing to the woman. Now, if Adam told her, she could have said, well, my husband told me and he's right here. And Adam was not on the other side of the garden. Adam was right there with her. So Adam, in a sense, from our perspective of the scripture and the narrative, reading the narrative, Adam stood by while this, this, this man or this male Right? As, as according to the Hebrew scripture, Wa-yomer, it don't say it don't says Wa-tomer, it don't says Wa-tomer, it says Wa-yomer, some will say Va-yomer, Va-yomer, modern Hebrew, Va-yomer, but it says Wa-yomer, Wa-yomer, that means Wa and Yomer, and he said. If it said Va-tomer or Wa-tomer, it would say, and she said. So the Nahash, the Nahash, Right, the Nahash or the serpent in the garden in Genesis chapter 3 was a male. Was a male. Right? Wisdom is a female. Right? Now you have to think about this for a moment. The book of Proverbs is written for sons, is written for men, almost implying that men need to be taught about wisdom. And also kind of verifying this idea generally that's believed that women tend to be I'm not gonna say more spiritual in that sense women are really more psychical potentially more spiritual but more psychical right in a sense that women already have a certain level of wisdom because their nature is as the nature of wisdom but now James the epistle to James points out there's two kinds of wisdom two kinds of wisdom one wisdom that's from above and one wisdom that is from below so in James you can look James I think it's maybe chapter 4 or so but it's in the epistle to James, epistle of James right it speaks about two kinds of wisdom two kinds of wisdom and what we heard Nepal Shada kind of reason on was one kind of wisdom and it's yeah it sounds very plausible Especially if you're monolingual and you're just, I mean, monolingual like one language. You basically don't know one language and you throw in the word Elohim here or there, right? But this here says, right, see, see, the serpent was also disrespectful as Uck. And Adam allowed the serpent to be disrespectful as Uck. What do we mean by that? Well, here it says right here, it says, with Ha Nahash and the serpent. Chaya, right? Chaya Arum Mikol Chayat Ha Sade Asher Asa Yahuwah Elohim. Now the serpent, the Nahash or Ha Nahash, Ha being the definite article, Nahash, 
and the serpent, we could say he was more subtle, right, than any than any beast, than any beast or living, you know, really when the Hebrew says Hayat, Hayat is from Hai. Chai is life. Mikol Hayat Ha Sade. From all Mikol Hayat. From all the living. Now the word Hayat is a feminine sense. The word Chaya or the word Haya, Haya he be. Haya. We ha nahash Haya Arum. Arum Mikol Hayat Ha Sade. Right? Now the serpent was more subtle. He was more subtle. Right, Arum. He was Arum, right? More subtle than any beast of the field, right? Than any Mikol, Hayat, Hasade, Asher, that which, right? Asa made Yahuwah, he who be who he be, Elohim. He who be who he be, the Elohim, the powers. See, it's really not originally the word Elohim refers to powers. Powers many in a singular he, in a singular he, who has three aspects. Robeno brought out the three aspects, and his three aspects is how he manifests in his relationship with his covenant people. Now, other people have Elohim, and because they are still in this false state, their Elohim is many gods, is many, is many different powers is many different powers. It's a very, very interesting thing. I hope I'm bringing out the, at least the basic sense and make one's curious, more curious to study this for themselves. Because you study this for yourself, you will find this truth and even more truth for yourself. Wayomer, Wayomer, and he said, Il Haisha. Wayomer, and he said, Il to Haisha, to the Isha. He said, Af, Af, for sure, for, for real? Af, Ki Amar, for he said, Elohim, for has Elohim said, Lo Toklu. Now, which Elohim was he speaking of here? Notice that the scripture says, Yahuwah Elohim. It says, to say it in an English sense, Jehovah, right? The Elohim. Jehovah the powers, right? Jehovah the power. Jehovah the Elohim. But when he spoke to the woman, to Haisha, he said, Af ki amar Elohim lo toklu. He said, Yea, hath Elohim said. You know which Elohim he was speaking of? Adam. He's talking of Adam. He was speaking of Adam there. See, because he didn't say Yahuwah Elohim. He said Elohim. And notice that in the very first um, verse of Genesis chapter 3, it explains that the serpent was more subtle. Ain't that subtle? That is subtle right there. You know what I mean? That is subtle right there. Because it says Yahuwah Elohim, but he says just Elohim. And people say, well, well how are you saying Adam was Elohim? Right? Wasn't man made in the image and after the likeness of the Elohim? Doesn't it not say in, in Luke, Luca? Luke's gospel, when it gives you the genealogy, it gets to Adam and it calls Adam Bain Elohim. It says that he is son of Elohim. You know, if I am son of this, this, this one, then I am this, I take on the attribute of my father. I inherit that which is of my father, you know, to the extent that I am able to inherit that. So he says, half Elohim said, right? Ye, y'all, you all, shall not eat of any tree of the garden. Now, here's how we're going to prove that the woman, yes, she was, she was beguiled. She was tricked, right? And Nepal should I, I say this as respectfully as possible, but you're, you're being tricked too, or, or you are tricking yourself, right? You're being tricked too, right? Um, why do we say this? Well, when we look at Genesis, right? We're in Genesis chapter 3. Well, look at Genesis, right? Genesis chapter 2. In Genesis chapter 2, right? In Genesis chapter 2, let's go right here. What does it say right here? In verse 15, it says, And Yahuwah Elohim 
took the man and put him in the Gan Ba'aden, in the Garden of Delights. The Garden of Eden, Aden is delights, right? In the Garden of Delights, to dress it and to keep it. And Yahweh Elohim commanded the man, who, oh wait, 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 hold on. Who did he command? Did he command the man and the woman? Who did he command? Did he command the man and the woman in Genesis chapter 2? Genesis chapter 2 at verse 16 it says, And Jehovah Elohim or Yahweh Elohim commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Now, in reading the Hebrew, we can say, and when speaking to someone, we can speak to an individual male, we can speak to an individual female. We can speak to a man and a woman, say you all. We can speak to a group of men, we can speak to a group of women, and this is brought out in the Hebrew. It often does not get translated. It's like in many places in the, in the KJV translation, the feminine, right, and we can even say in many places, the divine feminine is covered over. Now, I don't know whether the translators had that knowledge or whether they just suppressed that knowledge, but it doesn't come out. It gets lost, proverbially speaking, and actually saying, actually speaking, gets lost in translations. like the psalm that says that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Right? And, you know, earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and they that dwell in it. It really should say that the earth, she is his and all of her fullness and those that dwell or are seated up in her, in her. But instead they translate it, it right there. Instead they translate it right there. So here in Genesis chapter 2, at verse 16, the Lord God, the same one we have in Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 being referred to, right, is speaking to a singular man. Need we go to the Hebrew? I think it would be necessary just to go to the Hebrew for a moment so that ones can, though ones may not fully understand it, maybe there'll be others who do understand it that can give you the understanding. You know, why it's out, why it's out, Yahweh Elohim, Al Ha Adam, why it's out, Yahweh Elohim. Now, modern Yehudi, modern Jews, out of deference to the Tetragrammaton, the YHWH will say, Vaitzav, Vaitzav Adonai, Vaitzav Adonai, Elohim, Al Ha Adam. Right? And the Lord God commanded the man, Vaitzav Yahuwah Elohim, Al Ha Adam, Leimor. And he said, and he said, and see, if it was saying that, like there were many gods speaking or something, it would be in the plural sense, le moru or something like that. You, you know, it would be in a plural sense. It's in a singular sense. So saying the name Lord God that in the Hebrew Yahweh Elohim will be he who be who he be the power or the powers. He who be who he be the powers, right? All upon, up on, on, like upon, all Ha, the Adam, on the Adam, singular, Lemor, right, saying, of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Mikol eight, Hagan, Mikol from all eight, 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 tree, Ha, the Gan, the garden. Akol, Akol, Tokel, Akol, Tokel, Akol, Tokel. It's an interesting expression, a call to eat, tokel, to eat, like eating, to eat, eating, like in the sense eating, you may eat, eating, you may eat. That's brought out by the translator as freely eat. So there's no word there saying free. There's no word saying free right there, right? But the translator, I guess well, the translators were free to, you know, try to bring out the sense of a call, a call, a call, tokel, a call, tokel. Eating, eating, you male, right? To kel, to kel is saying you individual, you a singular man, you a singular man. Then it says, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. Now let's just make this point because a lot of people, this is kind of lost in the sauce, so to speak, by many ones and ones. 
All right, this is lost in the sauce right here. Let's see if we can bring this out of the sauce. Because we hear phones say, oh, why would he want man to have not the good and evil? He, he want not the good and evil. But hold on for a moment. When man was created, all right, and on every day of creation, according to the biblical, the scriptural, Bereshith, Bereshith, the Genesis narrative, every day when he created, he said it was what? Good. Right? On this day it was good, and on that day it was good. And when we have now man being created in his image after his likeness, male and female, he created them. He said, well, 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 you said male and female. Well, yeah, because if you studied the chromosomes, man has X and Y. That means he has the X chromosome, the feminine, and he has the Y. But the woman and woman have XX. Are, are you getting this? All right? But man was created, on the day man was created, according to the scripture, the sixth day, it said that man, right, the humanity, that is to say, was what? Was tov me'od, tov me'od, tov good me'od, very good, all right? So man already was good. He was good. Like when people now say they're lying, and people be saying, I'm good, well, they're really lying. You know what I mean? It's better they say, I'm well. But anyway, I'm good. No, Adam or the man, you know, or, the humanity in the generic sense their man in genesis 1 is used in the generic sense right was very good was very good was very good but that means that he had the knowledge of very good so if you if you're good or if you're very good right and somebody comes to you and say well i'm go I, I want you to get the knowledge of good and evil do you know anything about math you know about how the how the plus the uh, plus and, and minus, or, or what they call negative and positives works in math, right? How negative, that something already is a positive and now you enter into the negative and the positive, you lessen that which is positive. You lessen that which is positive. You see what I'm saying? If you're very good and I now, I now con you, I beguile you into good and evil, you become less than good. You become less than good. And in other words, Adam and Eve, because they got tricked out, right? Well, actually, Eve got tricked out. Adam was, 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 Adam knew what he was doing. This is why it says that the woman was in transgression, but not the man. A lot of men, they read that in the New Testament, like, see, I told you the woman was in transgression. But see, you, 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 you read well, maybe, but you don't understand well, right? Adam still upped up. He still sinned. That's why it says that, that Christ, HaMoshiach, he is the last Adam. It don't say that he's the last Adam and Eve. It said that he is the last Adam, right? In other words, Adam had to be upgraded or replaced, right? In other words, it's almost like on a computer when a virus gets in the system. What happened in Genesis chapter 3 was not as Nepal Shaddai and many other pseudo-gnostics would, would make you believe, try to make you be like Eve. That was the virus that got into because the good and evil trick, that was a virus that had got into it. Because they already were in a good state. They already were not just good, not even just good, not just good. They were still under the very good, right, until Adam ate of it. You see, because the command was given to the man, we don't know what would have happened to the woman if the man didn't eat. If the, if the man didn't eat, he might have been able to redeem his Isha. He might have been able to redeem his wife because the command was first and foremostly given to him. Where was Hawa? Where was Hawan? Where was Eve? Where was Eva? Where was Eva? Where was Eve? Where was Eve? Where was Eve in Genesis chapter 1 at verse 15, 16, and 17? Where it says, but of the tree... Of the knowledge of the knowledge of good and evil remind me of that movie with um, Tom Cruise and um, uh, Jack Nicholson where he says you want to know the truth you want to know the truth you can't handle the truth you want the knowledge of good and evil you cannot handle how has man handled the knowledge of good and evil mm. but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil Thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou. The thou there is not thou in the sense of you all. We have that in the Hebrew of you all, of both of y'all. You know what I mean? 
but we also have it in the sense of you male you male let's just bring this out right here right it says umi eats ha da'ata tov wa ra u and may eight may eight may from eight the tree ha the da'at da'at like we say like data data da'at ha da'at and from the tree of the knowledge tov good wa ra wa and ra and evil of beneficial things and harmful things good and evil tob wara lo tokal lo no no tokal tokal you singular individual indivisible dual individual male lo tokal mi manu don't eat mi manu don't eat of it key for beyond in the day akalka akalka for in the day that you male akalka ka ka the eye speaking to an individual male akalka in the day mi manu the day that you eat mi manu from it mot tamut from in the day that you eat of it death you will be dying See, a lot of people say, oh, it says you would die in that day. Like they read in the English, monolingualism. Getting that monolingualism schism. No, the Hebrew here says mot tamut. Mot tamut, right, means that mot death, tamut, you will be dying. That's what it means. Mot tamut, that death, that you will be dying the death. It's like a slow death. Right, you'll be dying to death from that day. So what it's saying is that from the day that you eat of it, right, in the day that you eat of it, death you will be dying. Death you will be dying. It didn't say that you would you will die completely in that day, but you're gonna start to experience what it's like to be dying. You're gonna feel the difference. You're gonna know the difference. Oh, oh, surely you're gonna know the difference. See, we don't even know what it's like to not be dying to death, you know, like in, in, in the state that we are in, humanity is in now, right? But they knew, right? Well, at least Adam, because this is being spoken to Adam, right? This is being spoken to Adam right here. So it says right here, it says, key for be yom, be in yom the day, akalaka, you male eat me menu from it, mot death, Tamut, you death, you will be dying. Death, you will be dying. You will be dying to death. Because many people say, oh, 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 Elohim lied. Elohim lied because they didn't die that day. So Elohim must be a liar. So they ask, oh, who lied? Elohim lied. No, the Nahash was more subtle. When somebody is subtle, you might not be able to catch them in the lie because they're so subtle. All right? And this is why we study. By studying this, because we came across a lot of this, this pseudo-Gnostics, the pseudo-Gnostics or the, the atheistic Gnostics or the secular Greek Gnostics or the fallen off Hebrew and Christian Gnostics, right? Not all the Gnostics believe the same thing because Gnosis just means knowledge, right? Not all the Gnostics believe the same thing, like not all Christian denomination, all Christian are the same kind of Christian. Otherwise, why would Christian be killing Christian if they, you're not down with this sort of Christian if they were all the same thing? So here, the knowledge of good and evil is the knowledge of beneficial things, that which is beneficial and that which is hurtful or harmful. And he says, thou male. This was not spoken to Eve unless you said that, well, because of the rib. The rib was chromosome. The rib was chromosome. That surgery was chromosome, was chromosomal, all right? This is why we can still prove it even to this very day. The translator translates rib, but there's other places where that same Hebrew word is found and it's not translated as rib. Did you know that? So the same word in Hebrew that is translated as rib in other places of the scripture is not translated as rib. So see what happened when you deep end on the translator, even though the translator told them in the first version of the King James Version of the Bible. This had been translated out of the original languages. And people never say, well, what are those original languages? 
let's just go and compare. Now we have the technology, interlinear Bibles and all that. But even with interlinear Bibles, you need to get a little bit more, right? Um, um, how can I say? More knowledge of the Hebrew. Because you could read a word and take a word here and take a word there. You know, like looking the looking the strong thing. You know, that's why we would be going through that right here. But we said, let's just go through the text right here. So we can get the, not just the, the subtext, right, or the subword, but look at the context of the words, right? And you can follow up on the definition. Each of these words you can find in Strong's Concordance. It will bring it out, each word individually wrapped, but now in the flow, in the flow of what's being said. This is why a lot of people, I be hearing folks talk about, oh, it says in the day you eat of your dying and die in the day. And I said, that's not what the Hebrew says. The Hebrew says, in the day that you eat of it, that you eat from it, death you will be dying. Death you will be dying. And just like somebody that, that has a terminal illness, right? And people who have experienced that, you know, and they have testified to that, they even, that's what becomes so, it's so tragic about it. Because they know they got something and they could feel it. You know, they feel it from day to day. You know, because this thing is literally like like having a cancer or something is eating them up. They are dying. They are they they are death. They are dying. They didn't just die. You know, sometimes people just have a sickness or something like that, and bang, they dead. You know what I mean? Other people, it's like they hold on, but every day that goes by, they're getting weaker and weaker. They're getting sicker and sicker. That is what Yahuwah Elohim HaKadosh Baruch Baruch Hashem was saying to the man. To the man. So, when we scroll forward to Genesis chapter 3, just a little more right here. Just a little more and we'll pick up on this a little bit more. Right? So, is Nepal Shaddai correct? Is she right? No. She's not right. However, I can't really... Uh, I'm not going to say I don't blame. I'm not blaming anyone. I'm just dealing with what you brought forward. And say what you brought forward is loose in the caboose, right? And you can throw Elohim around all you want to, but you're not understanding Elohim in the Hebrew context. You're just taking this word right here and its simple, basic translation as God's and not even knowing that whenever it's used of, we could say, the Most High, it's used of He. In other words, what's strange is that this is a plural word, yes, but whenever the plural word is used of Jah, Jehovah, it's always He. It's always in a singular sense. And this goes against, we could say, you know, the textbook grammar. It doesn't conform. The Hebrew in the scripture does not always conform to textbook grammar. It's just like the thunk part. You know, I thunk about that. You know, uh, he, he thunk, you know, you know what we, he thunk on it. No, no, he thought on it. But you see how the word thought is in, the, in English? Thought can mean an individual thought, right? Or thought can mean a process of thinking. And we understand it. Don't we understand it? How do we understand what thought means in the sense, right? It's based on the, 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 the sentence. It's based on the context of what's being said. It's based on the spirit of the word, and not the letter of the law. It's not about the letter of the law. So though we're going to the, the letter here, we're interpreting it in the spirit of the language, in the Ruach HaKadosh, in the Holy Spirit. So when the serpent, who is more subtle, that means more tricky, that's why Hawa said, Hawa said, and she says it, she says that the serpent beguiled me. Because after it was all said and done, she was like, wow, beguiled me. And even the enmity, in a sense, you know, the male, female, when we talk about why sometimes men and women, our relationship could be the most wonderful, but then sometimes it goes sideways. That ever happened? Mind them and even woman them, right? You know, our relationship with our significant other, our spouse, our wife, seems really good, but then sometimes it seems to go bad. It all kind of emanates, so to speak, from this original incident that occurred. Right? This is why the Hebrew scripture is so on point if one can get past the monolingual and get lost in translation. Right? The serpent was more, he, the serpent, he was more subtle than any beast of the field that Jehovah Elohim had made. And he said to the woman, now note, if you read the chapter, chapter 3, when you go a little bit more, when it says that after she looked at it, Right, it says right here, it says right here, it says right here, and she took of the fruit thereof in verse 6 of chapter 3. She took of the fruit thereof, 
and did eat, and she gave also to her husband with her. I've heard some guys try to say, well, Adam wasn't really there. Like, she was talking to this dude over here, and he was, no, he was right there. He said nothing, which causes me to suspect that, did he want to test, like, it almost like he was tempting Yahweh Elohim. Like, wait, if she eats of it, because he told me, but if she eats of it, what will happen? And when she didn't drop down dead, you know, he might have thought, okay, this must be cool. I'm not saying this is what Adam's thought was, but the, the Hebrews, we as Hebrews and as Yehudi, this is how we break down and build. This is Midrash. This is the Bait Midrash, the house of study, how we really do what we does, right? So here, the woman gave to a husband who was with her, was with her. Notice, she said, I think in her the little clip, that being naked is wrong. Being naked is only wrong once you have fallen from being very good. If you, when you were very good, like a little baby. When a little baby is a little baby before they start to learn things about this filthy, polluted, fallen world, then they take on our fallen nature. They take on the fallen nature of everybody else. And they begin, and you be like, you were so cute as a baby. You were so precious as a baby. Now the person's not precious anymore. Why? Because they, are, they have become more... Um, virus filled with the virus of this fallen state this fallen state and the fall occurred right here now notice this right here just a little bit more right here I'm looking at the time right here already a little past the time that we had intended to in this but to just put some things together for the first round and this is not us like you know we're not trying to bang on the sister whatever like that but when we hear that she seems like a real sincere like a, a sincere seeker even when she was talking about women and men and some things in the Bible, she even said something interesting that she wouldn't want no woman to teach her in that sense. Even though she's not saying it because of the Bible, even though her personal opinion seemed to echo what the scripture says. You know, but anyway, that being as it is, right? So here, notice what the serpent was tricky. You shall not, he says, half God said, half Elohim said, right? Af, ki amar Elohim. Lo toklu toklu. Remember, I said tokal, tokal or tokel was saying singular tokel toklu. The oo part there now is saying to you all. Now notice this. He spoke to the woman in the plural. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He spoke to the woman in the plural because the man was right there. The serpent and the hash was probably expecting Adam to say something. Adam said nothing, like some of you men them. Y'all say nothing. And you'll be like, yeah, the woman, the goddess, everything. No, goddess worship actually came about because of what happened here in chapter 3. This is where goddess worship. So yes, in a sense of fallen humanity, the mother, the female, the mother goddess was first worshipped among, among fallen humanity. And, and, and it comes out here when he's called, he says that Eve is mother of all living. How, how have he lied? He lied, lied, lied. He forgot that, the, that Yahuwah Elohim had breathed into him the Nishamat Chayim, the breath of life. And he became a living soul. Right? But all of that is before he broke the one commandment. So the, the onus of this right here, see here's what the serpent was doing. The serpent was trying to get Adam. You know what I mean? Like you're trying to get this nigga but you'll, you'll first attack his woman or you'll first go after the woman. You'll, you'll first approach the woman to get the man. And the man, seeing his woman approach, he's going to just be silent. He's not going to say nothing. He's not going to do nothing. I, 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 don't know if you, I don't know if you get what I'm saying right there, but let's go on right here. So he says right here, he said, half God said. In other words, he's saying, did God really say this? Now, we have to ask the question, did Elohim or God, according to the translators, did he really say that you all, that all of y'all are not to eat, right, of any tree of the garden? Did Elohim say that? Well, did he? All we need to do is go back to the chapter where, first of all, first of all, serpent, first of all, serpent, Right? Ha-Nahash. 
First of all, he just said, first, of, here's what Adam should have said. First of all, serpent, he did not say to us, he said to me. He gave me a command. He said, of every tree of the garden, I may freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, he said that I shall not eat of it. For in the day that I eat of it, I would be dying the deaths. That's what he should have said. All right? But no, he left up to his woman. You know, some of you brothers do the same thing. You leave up to your woman, right, to take on, take on the, take, take on, take this on, right? All right? And the woman said to the serpent, right? And the woman said to the serpent, I notice this here in the Hebrew. Wa tomer, wa and tomer, tomer. Tomer here is she said. Wa and tomer. Va tomer, va tomer, and she said, Haisha, the woman, el ha nahash, and she said to the nahash. <laughs> Notice this, like I say again, see, you really have to read or begin to try to understand the Hebrew. The way the serpent phrased it, the serpent lied on Yahuwah Elohim. Further, the serpent disrespected Yahuwah Elohim by referring to him as just Elohim. Instead of saying, have Yahuwah Elohim. You know what I mean? Like if this is your king man, if this is your king man, I say, did your man say this? And if you are really reverencing and respecting your king man, you'll say, my king man said. You wouldn't just, like, I already demoted him to man, not to king man. So right here, the serpent Hanachash already demoted in a sense Yahu now he is Yahuwah because he is in a special relationship with his created people, with his created man, and then with the woman being brought forth with his created people. But with the man, right, taking, you know, to whom more is given, more is required. But now she speaks, she speaks, right? And what did she say? She say, Mi pri, mi pri eight hagana no kel. She says, of the fruit of the trees of the garden, nokel, nokel, nokel means we may eat. Wow. She is speaking up for the we. Where's Adam? Adam is right there with her. Oh, okay. It don't say Adam walked up after a while. Adam saw what was going on and he came over. No, he was standing right there. But of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, Elohim said, you lie. It wasn't Elohim that said that. Unless you're speaking about the Elohim, your man. Unless you're speaking about your husband, the Elohim. You're not speaking about Yahuwah Elohim. But first of all, she didn't say nothing to you. Now notice what she says right here. She says right here in verse 3, Genesis 3.3. 3, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden. O mi pri ha eit ha betok hagan. Betok in the midst hagan of the garden. Amar Elohim, Amar said Elohim. Now, Amar is singular. It's saying, he said. It didn't say they said, but he said, right? Amar Elohim, lo toklu mi menu. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on for a moment. How could she say that Elohim, first of all, she didn't say Yahweh Elohim, but I said Elohim, lo, lo toklu. We, we already showed you this right here. When we go right here to Genesis chapter 2, right? In Genesis chapter 2, in speaking to Adam, what does he say to Adam? He says to Adam, Lo tokal, lo tokal, lo tokal mi menu. He didn't say anything about toklu. Toklu is the you all. He didn't say nothing to you all. He said something to ha Adam. He said to Ha Adam. So now she's just speaking away. She just chatty, 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 right? But of the fruit of the, and Adam is not saying nothing. But of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, Elohim. So now she follows, she's following the serpent's disrespect. It's almost like, I have to say this, Sister Nepal, when I heard you speak on that, on one level, it was like you had some, but then it's almost like a similar thing. So I, I can see why you're defending this right here. But you'd be wrong, right? But it's a very subtle argument. I will give you that, a very subtle argument. But of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, Elohim have said that ye, ye means y'all. Thou means you, individual. 
Ye mean y'all, more than one, thou means one. Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest she die. Oh, you know she's a liar now. How can, how can you dress and keep a garden without touching it? I can, listen, I could be in a marijuana, like you could have a marijuana, um, like a marijuana farm or something like that. And you could have somebody there, you know, the people there, you know, taking care of the marijuana. And you say, well, you're there to keep and to dress the marijuana, but you should not smoke the marijuana. Now, they're there, right? And that's what they're doing. They're keeping and dressing it. Now, somebody else comes along, right? <laughs> Right? And say, well, what you can do is you can take the marijuana and you can sell it to somebody else. You know, they're adding on. They're adding on. She was adding on. This is the era of Hawa, of Eva, of Eva. This is why later on, remember, her own testimony is that she was begot. Because after the fact, you know, like after something goes and so after something happens, you recognize, oh, shite. Oh, shite. I was tricked, man. You know, she thought she probably thought like, yeah, I, I'm speaking to this serpent. But now here, so no one said to her anything about this. No one said to her anything about this. Elohim did not speak to her according to the narrative in the Bible. Why? Because she wasn't there. She is speaking about something that she knows nothing about. And the only way she can know anything about is if her husband, the Ben Elohim, the son of Elohim, according to Luke, Luke says that, you know, Luke chapter, let me just bring this out here because somebody would say that, oh, 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 the, the Bible don't say that. The Bible don't say that. You didn't show and prove that. Well, hear me. Hear me and go read it if you can find it in your Bible, right? In Luke, I'm saying this to the funny folks, right? In Luke chapter 3, in Luke chapter 3, verse 38. In fact, let's do this right here, just a little more, a little more. You know, we had something else to do, but we said, you know, we got to do this right here. We got to do this right here. This got to get done right here. All right? This got to get done right here. At least to put forward some of this in as clear or concise, you know, and then she's bouncing around talking about wisdom. Right? If you really had encountered wisdom, she would say, I'm not that bitch right there. I'm wisdom. You're talking about the bitch over there. You know, I'm saying the other wisdom from below is the biatch. Right? The true wisdom from above is the queen. Anyway, but let's point this out right here, 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 here. Let's go Adam, because there's two kinds of wisdom, right? And the Bible even brings that out right here, right? Two kinds of wisdom, right? And let's go right here. Okay, here we got two verses. You see right there, Luke chapter 3, verse 38, which was the son of Enos or Enosh, which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam. Which was or who was that which to be who? Who was the son of Enos? Enosh? Who was the son of Seth? Who was the son of Adam? Who was the son of, huh? Now notice, son there, where it says the son, that's italicized. Whenever you find italicization in the King James Version, that means those words are not there in the Hebrew or even in the Koine Greek. They're added by the translator or the translators to give a sense to English speakers, to monolingual speakers. So really it would be saying that Adam who was of God. Adam who was of God. In fact, let's just bring this up right here. Let's see if we can look at this in the better Hebrew of it right here. Here it says right here. Here it says right here. It says Ben Enosh, Ben Shet, Ben Adam, Ben Elohim. So here it's saying that, that Adam is the son of God. Adam is of God. This is why the Elohim, that the serpent being so subtle, he wasn't talking about Yahuwah Elohim, because otherwise he would have said Yahuwah Elohim. He should have said, half, he should have said, yea, half Yahuwah Elohim said, y'all should not eat of any tree. Notice he said, any tree, any tree. Notice how he flipped it around. He flipped it around. He didn't say, he didn't get directly to the point. He didn't say, have Elohim said for you not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. No, he tricked them out. He tricked them out. He said, have Elohim said that you're not to eat of any of the trees? You know, like he already knows what a guan. He already knows what's up. It's like people come to you sometime. I've learned from this right here by studying this. People come to you sometime and they do the same thing. They know this is the real question you want to ask, but instead you're asking around the question. 
And then you're getting the person caught up in their feelings and emotions because you're asking around the question instead of getting directly to the question. And so he drew out of Haisha, the woman, right? Then the woman now starts to talk. And when the woman is talking, the serpent already knows what Elohim commanded the man. He already knows that Elohim didn't command the woman. He commanded the man. That's why he turned to the woman, right? Now the man is right there, and he must have, I have to say this, must have bitched out Adam right and just like just being quiet you know when you really start to get this you're going to ask why was adam so quiet why didn't and see that is the fall of man and in particular the black man that's the fall right there of the fruit of the trees of the garden we may eat we may eat but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden elohim you mean yahuwah elohim so there's about we didn't even count the counts but we were to like do this like in court where they, they charge you with something and they give you counts, right? You know, one count would be that it's not Elohim, but Yahuwah Elohim, count one. Second count would be it's not ye, but he spoke to he. She should have said, no, I wasn't there. My husband told me about it, but he's right here. He can explain it to you because he heard the whole, he's the one who was commanded. He was the one who was commanded. And notice what the serpent said. Hath Elohim said. No, 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 no. He didn't say this. He commanded it. I mean, he said it, but he commanded saying. And now she responds to that. This is what Elohim said. What Elohim? Who, who, who Elohim? Ye shall not eat of it. Neither shall ye touch it, lest you die. Now notice how she refers to death. Elohim specifically said, right? Mot tamut. Death mot tamut. Tamut, you will be dying. You will be dying. You will die. You will be dying. But the sense of the Hebrew, you'll be dying. She says, neither ye, neither shall ye, neither shall y'all, neither shall y'all touch it. Go back to Genesis chapter 3. I mean chapter 2, the chapter before. And Elohim don't say nothing about touching it in verses, what is it, 15? In verses 16, really 16 and 17. He don't say nothing about touching it. Because you, you tend in the garden. You tend to all the trees in the garden. Just You can eat of all these other trees. Don't eat of this one. Plain and simple. What don't people get? Now if you say, well, oh, you don't want him to have wisdom. Don't want him to have wisdom. Wait, if he's created in the image after the likeness of Elohim, he already has wisdom. But see, to have wisdom, but the failure to act on the wisdom, that's another thing. right? He let his wisdom... Eve speak and even she would say later on that he beguiled me the serpent beguiled me notice this Eve you got we got to give it to Eve right she was tricked out right she was out of pocket right but then Adam was more out of pocket Adam didn't say nothing and then when Adam is is approached by notice one says Yahuwah Elohim and say Elohim was walking in the garden but Yahuwah Elohim was walking in the garden and say Adam Adam where are you Adam 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 Right? And Adam, he, you know, he starts to talk all this stuff about, um, like, um, and the woman whom thou gavest to be with him. Now, notice what Adam did. Adam started to blame the woman. See, that's that knowledge of good and evil. That's that knowledge. He fell from being very good, just becoming a good or evil thing, good and an evil thing. Notice that. You know what I'm saying? In other words, you have a perfect score, but you now, now you, you have a perfect report card, a very good report card. But you're going to exchange a very good report card for a good and a bad, a good and a bad report card. Can you imagine that? A good and a bad. That means some classes you did not very good. No class you did very good. Now, after this good and bad thing, you don't do very good. You do good in one subject and you did bad in it. But before you ucked up, you was doing very good. See the trick? People don't even recognize what the trick was. Everything in the garden... With the exception of this tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The only evil thing right there was attached to the knowledge of good and evil. Good and evil. And all he said, don't eat it. Don't eat it. Don't eat it. Tend it. Dress it. Blah, 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 blah. But don't eat it. She now says, neither shall you touch it lest you die. And now, after the serpent already caught Eve, he caught Eve and Adam. But first he caught Eve because her mouth was open. Her mouth was running. And see, I'm not saying that, oh, woman, she, I'm, I already told you the divine feminine is the very first word of, of, of Genesis. Who has told you that? Right? 
Ross I Adonis, Rastafari Rabbi, who has told you that? All right, who has brought that out? I'm not saying no, nobody else knows it, but I haven't seen nobody else say it in, in the community, right? Because they, how could they say it? They would have to be in the Hebrew, right? They, they're still wrestling with the King James Version of the Bible, the Bible, of the Bible, right? Notice something right here. Once the serpent now caught her, because the serpent caught her on a few points of adding. First of all, the serpent kind of threw bait out there and she bit the bait to disrespect Yahweh Elohim by just calling him Elohim. Boom. Right? First point. Then she goes on like she was there, like it was told to her. And then she added to the words, right? She added to what the commandment was, right? Because that wasn't what the commandment was. Now, some say, well, maybe Adam told her this, but Adam didn't say nothing. That means the serpent also caught Adam. In other words, your woman is talking to me, and you the man, like I'm flirting with your woman, and you're there just, just there watching it. And then later on, you're going to say, oh, that, that woman, look what she did. Nigga, you was there. You was quiet. <laughs> I'm just laughing at something because something happened years ago with an attempted family and everything, you know, where this dude, you know, a brother of mine was flirting with my wife. I took out my sword and everything. And the nigga, I'd never seen a nigga jump more. You know, my little son, he was just so happy and everything, you know. But that was just instinctual. Maybe it's because I had went through this narrative before. I said, oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, no. It's one thing if he was on the other side of the garden, right? But now once the serpent recognized the man is not going to stand up, he's not to stand up. So Adam was seeing that he was not to stand up. So the guy, I don't know what Adam was thinking, but he was not to stand up. So the guy, now the serpent now could, could, could lay the bait. He could lay the, lay, like, like spring the trap. He already laid the bait, but now he's springing the trap. And the serpent said to the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Now, what the hell does a surely die mean? <laughs> yo, y'all don't want to do this. I might get hurt. Yo, nigga, you're not going to surely get hurt. When you ask somebody, wait, 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 what you mean not surely? When you zoom in, when you zoom in on that word, not surely. No, it don't say that. It say she said that he serpent. So the serpent is he, Adam is he, and Eve is she. I want you to see the scenario. Wayomer, Wayomer ha nachash, and said the serpent, El haisha. He's just strictly talking to her. He's egging Adam. He's egging Adam right in his face. I give so much thanks to Hamushiach Yeshua to be the last Adam, you know, and, and we can resurrect the real mind them. We can resurrect again, because we can now even see these things within the narrative. Wayomer ha nachash el haisha. And the serpent said to haisha, Lo mut te mutun. Lo no mot, excuse me. Lo mot te mutun. Te mutun. No, death, y'all not going to be dying. <laughs> But, but but he's responding to what she says, right? With lo tigau, with lo tigau bau, and don't touch him, don't touch him. To say don't touch it, the it is him. Don't touch him. With lo tigau bau, pen less te mutun, less y'all die. And he says. No death, you will die. <laughs> subtle, sub, tricky, 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 tricky for Elohim. Notice he's still disrespecting Yahuwah Elohim. Yes, Elohim, he is the Elohim of the beginning, right? Speaking about the Elohim that command, but he already now, Yahuwah is the covenant transcendental personal relationship. He who be who he be. He has a relationship now, right, with Adam and by extension, right, with her. He's saying, for Elohim doth know in the day ye eat of it, then your eyes shall be open and ye shall be as gods. That, that's some trick knowledge, if anything. Wasn't Adam created in the image and after the likeness of God? Male and female from him, male came forward from his XY, from, from that chromosome that is falsely translated as rib came forward with her, right? So she also has that, you could say, God particle. So they already have the Elohim. They are already in that light of Elohim. 
They were before Adam ate. When Eve ate, it was redeemable. Why? Because he didn't, say, he didn't command Eve. He didn't command Eve. He commanded Adam. But once Adam ate, Adam could not be a redeemer for Eve because he has fallen. You see what I'm saying? Because he has fallen. You shall be as Elohim, knowing good and evil. See, but the point is that Adam, man, was very good. And by extension, before this fall of man, they were very good. Once they fell, they will have the knowledge of good and evil. It's like knowing things that are beneficial and not, you're in a good state. You're, you're in a very good state, right? Everything is very good. Then somebody says, you know, and, and, and see, check this out. Someone who says this is jealous of you, hates you. People trying to make sense. Oh, the serpent was trying to help them out. The serpent got them ucked up, got humanity ucked up. You mean I'm in a very good, I got a very good credit rating. Now you want me to have the knowledge of a, of a good and a bad credit rating. That means you want me to get a, a bad, a less than very good credit rating. I already got a very good credit rating. What I need to know about a, a good and a bad credit rating. You, you know what I'm saying? You know, why do I need to know about debt? See, the only thing that was introduced by this knowledge of good and evil was lessening the good and introducing the debt, introducing the evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, you know, being practical, right? And that it was, uh, it, it, was, it was a delight to the eyes, like pleasing to the eyes, and that it was a tree to be desired to make one wise. It didn't say that the tree would make one wise, as Nepal Shaddai said. It was a tree that was desired. That's why it says, your desire shall be to your husband. Instead of turning to the man, her man, and say, yo, honey, what you think about what this snake is saying? What do you think about what the Nahash is saying right here? She could have done that and provoked the nigga to speak. You know, provoke him to say something. Right? But no, she just went along in this, in this, in this, in this. It, 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 I'm not, I don't want to say it's goofy, but when you now know in the Brit Kadasha, right, in the resurrection, the redemption, our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, sense the glory of our God and Father, the King of Kings. Yeah. I would say it was very, on hindsight, it was very goofy, right? On hindsight, it was very goofy, right? It was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise. It didn't say it was a tree to make one wise. See, a lot of these guys would say, oh, the tree can make you wise. No, no, no. It wasn't a tree of wisdom. It was a tree of the knowledge of good things, beneficial things and evil and hurtful things and harmful things right she took of the fruit of thereof and did eat and gave also her husband with her and he did eat and the eyes of them both were open and they knew that they were naked they knew wait hold on for a moment what does it say in the, in the chapter before and last verse of chapter 2 verse 25 and they were both naked the man and his wife, the, the man and Ishto, and his wife is Esheto or Seto, and were not ashamed. So what was this telling us here in the next chapter? Where it's saying that they knew that they were, were, were naked. They knew they were naked. No, they knew they, they were ashamed. Before they were naked, there was no shame. Because it was in very good. See, in the very good condition, you could be naked. In a very good condition, that's the way God created us, right? But once you get into this good and bad, like something good could happen, you know, that could be good, but then also this bad thing can happen. It could be good, it could be bad, you know, splashing, dashing, restless, see, sometimes happy, sometimes sad, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. It's this fickle, this fickle, this mix up moods and attitudes sort of condition that's what happened they fell from a very good i don't know why people don't get this they were in a very good condition because we don't know what a very good condition is in this good and evil kind of state in this fallen state right so the eyes of both of them were open 
You mean they couldn't see each other? No, the eyes of both of them now were open to the negative consequences and the less than good, the less than good and the negative consequences. That's what it was open to, right? And they sued and they sold fig leaves together and made themselves apron. Wow. You mean with all this knowledge they had, they didn't have the wisdom to make themselves something a little more appropriate, right? Than a bunch of um, salad dressing. Uh, you know, you know, and I'm gonna say that people say, "Oh, you're mocking." We're not mocking them. We're not the angels that mocked them. It was Mastama that mocked them, and his puppet, Mastama's puppet, the one Mastama, the one you would call Hasatan or Diablos. His puppet was the Nahash, right? And then we see in verse eight, his respect, his respect is put on the name. The respect is put on the Elohim, and they heard the voice of Yahuwah Elohim walking in the Gan. Hagan in the garden in the cool of the day and Adam and Ishto hid themselves. Why are you running? Why are you running? <laughs> and that was and the rest of them. Why are you running? We got the Hebrews and Israelites like them running. Why are you running? They running. Why are they running? Why didn't they say, yo, you lied to us. We know good and evil. No, they recognize, oh, we, we upped up. We fucked up. We messed up, yo. He was right. The serpent was 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 deceptive, was subtle, right? And hid themselves from the presence. They didn't want to be in the face. It's on sight. No, we don't want to see you. We don't want you to see us. Because we ashamed of that which we wasn't ashamed of. It's like a child, a little baby. Is a little baby ashamed? When does a little baby become ashamed? When they become as one of us. Oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. So they hid from the presence of Yahuwah Elohim among the trees. <laughs> Get this? There's a deeper point here, but the basic Pesha point um, among the trees, amongst the trees of the garden. And Yahuwah Elohim called to Adam saying, where art thou? Now people say, well, Elohim didn't know where they are. You know when you know, it's almost like your child is hiding. You know what they're hiding. Where are you? Where are you so-and-so? Where are you? Where are you cutie, cutie? Where are you? Where, 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 where are you at? Where are you at? Where are you at? You know they're hiding behind the curtain. You know they're over there behind the couch, the sofa. You know they're over there in the closet. You see them peeking, but you pretend like you don't see them because you want to see what their response is. They were like little children, so to speak. And he said, I heard thy voice. And who said, how come Eve ain't speaking up now? I was speaking to that serpent and you lied to us. No, because they recognized he didn't lie. They recognized that the serpent was subtle. And she recognized she was tricked out. And then she looked over at Adam and said, what the uck? You didn't say nothing. But now look what Adam is saying. I heard thy voice in the garden. And I was afraid. Why are you afraid? Was he afraid before? Because now with the knowledge of good and evil, he fall from being very good. When you're in a very good condition, you're not fearing nothing. You're not fearing nothing. But then once that condition changes to a less than very good, that's good, less than very good, and evil, oh man, you're subjected to fear. Because I was naked. You was naked before, you and your wife, but you wasn't ashamed because you were very good. Your condition was very good, right? But now he says, I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. Notice, notice. He said, I hid myself. He didn't say, yeah, yeah, me and my, me and my boo. Because now the boo in this, you know, he, he, you know, he, he, everything fall. Everything fall from an ideal. You know, it's like a relationship when you said the men of relationship was perfect. Everything was great. But now all this mixed up comes in. And he said, who told thee that thou was naked? And let's ask the question. Who told him that he was naked? Can you answer that? Who told? Was it the serpent? Was it the fruit? Was it the tree? Was it Eve? Who told him that? Guiltiness was resting on his conscience. Oh, yeah. Hast thou eaten of the tree? So Yahuwah Elohim, Elohim didn't even wait for him to go through all that. HaKadosh Baruch Hu just said, all right. Has, let me ask you another question. You know when you ask somebody a question, they don't really answer it. So you say, okay, let me ask you another question. Maybe you can answer this question. Say so you didn't answer the first question. Hast thou eaten of the tree? Where have I commanded thee? Notice what Yahuwah Elohim said. He didn't say, have you eaten of the tree that I commanded y'all? That I commanded you all? No, that I commanded thee, I, Adam, man. 
that thou, 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 not ye, not ye, but thou shouldest not eat. That's why I said a lot of these ones, they read well, and they probably didn't do well in school. Remember that class in school, reading comprehension? I was surprised at a lot of my schoolmates. The reading comprehension was like sometimes when we took these tests, they were like the easiest tests. Sometimes math and other stuff, geometry, was a little more challenging because you had to remember formulas and other kind of things like that. But people would take a reading comprehension and they would have questions at the end of the essay you just read. And you know what? People, I always wonder why a lot of people failed that, did bad on that. Right? I, I liked it because it was easy. Sometimes I didn't always sometimes even read the whole thing. Sometimes what I would do is read the questions and then look through the scans of the text for the answer that was that that, that matches what was in the what was in the, 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 the passage. But you know what people do? People what they do do, right, is that they do do this, right? They would read it and then they don't like how it, it, it is, and they would answer what they would have wanted it to say. They answer what they want. I think a lot of folks do this with the Bible. They, they answer what they wanted to say and not what's really there. Hast thou eaten of the tree where I commanded thee? It's not I commanded you all that you all should not eat. He's speaking singularly, directly to the man because he knows and even anybody who reads these two, three chapters know that in chapter 2, verses... 16 and 17, the, the Lord God, Yahweh Elohim, commanded the man, the man, the man, say it, commanded the man, the man, the man, the man, commanded the man, saying of every tree of the garden, thou, thou, the singularity, right, mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou male, not, not ye, not you, not you and your wife, no, thou male shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof, Thou shalt surely die, more correctly the Hebrew, right? In the day you eat of it, you will be dying the death. You will be dying. You'll be dying the death, right? Anyway, like slow death, right? So here, the man said, what did the man say? Yeah, daddy. Yeah, pops. Yeah, yeah, Abba. You right. You right. I'm wrong. I'm so sorry. F forgive me. I, I, I shouldn't have done that. No, what does he say? What does Adam say? He says the same thing that a lot of black men say. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> and he says, the, the, the man said, the woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I did eat. Uh-oh. 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 He is there, listening to the whole thing. She decides, she makes a decision, she passes it to him. He's the one who's given the command, not him and her, right? She now goes and eat, right? And she passes to him, right? She eats and she don't drop down dead, in other words. She passes to him, he eats, then all this stuff comes out, right? They, they all shame and everything. They now had knowledge of evil, of shame. Isn't shame kind of evil? Shame not good thing. Right, but anyway, he says, and the man said, the woman, the woman, is that how you, who told thee that thou was naked? The woman? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldst not eat? The woman? The woman who thou gavest to be with me. You know, that's like when you give somebody something, you do something that is will be helpful to them, but you give them little simple rules, and now, you know what I mean? It's like you give them some money and everything, and now they take the money and spend it on crack and become a crackhead, and they say, it's all your fault because you gave me the money. And you say, I give you this money, but don't spend it on drugs. Don't spend it on crack. And that's the first thing they do, and they're blaming you. You gave me the money. The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. He don't even say the serpent was talking to my Isha. And I just stood there like a, uh. And Yahuwah Elohim in verse 13 said to the woman, what is this that thou hast done? He was like, oh, you mean Jehovah Elohim didn't know? He knew. It's like you, you do with your children. You ask him. You want to see, see how honest, how forthright, or which one of them, like two children getting both in trouble, and you want to find out who's going to really, you know, who, who, who's going to own up, right? I, I actually have to say I love what the beguiled woman, Eve, said, because she's a little straightforward. I really don't like what the man said, the man blaming the woman. 
He, no, no. The man is blaming Yahuwah Elohim. He's blaming Jehovah Elohim. Right? After, remember what he said in chapter 2, verse 23? Adam said, This is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, Isha, because she was taken out of Ish. Right? Therefore, look what Adam said. Shall a man leave his father and his mother? That's the next question. Who is Adam's mother? Right? And shall cleave to his wife, his Ishto, and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, naked, the man and his wife, and they were not ashamed. Why? Because they were still in a very good condition. That's all they had knowledge of, that which was very good. They didn't have knowledge of fukari. Now they have knowledge of fukari, right? And Yahuwah Elohim said to the woman, what is this that thou hast done? And look what the woman says, Haisha. You got to give it to her right here. She said, the serpent beguiled me. The serpent tricked me. The Nahash, he tricked me. That nigga tricked me. And I did eat. All right? And then Yahuwah Elohim turns to the serpent. Now we could get into more of this, but if you want to find out where, um, why the first, the first one worshipped by fallen humanity was the mother, the woman. The goddess was worshipped. That is true. Some people will tell you in the conscious community or whatnot, wherever, that is true. The Bible proves it. In verse 20, where it says, And Adam called his wife's name Hawa, right? Because she was mother of all living. Now, remember, this is after the knowledge of good and evil. You know what I'm saying? After he fell from a very good condition. Let me ask you a question. How could his wife, who he gave birth to, in effect, in effect, Adam was the first one to give birth, in effect, right? Because she came from his chromosome, right? Command male have X and Y and woman have X and X. Go figure, right? How could he say that his wife was mother of all living? How could he say that? Well, he could say that because he's not in his right mind anymore. He's fallen. He's not in his right mind anymore. Nigga's not in his right mind anymore. Okay, the final proof right here, the final proof right here is Genesis, the chapter before. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. And Yahweh Elohim formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Oh, 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 uh, what kind of soul? A living soul. Does that mean there's a dead soul? There's a dead psyche? Uh-oh. He became a living psyche. He became a living soul. Ain't that something? He was a living soul when he was in a very good condition, right? And then after breaking the one commandment, right, he then starts up the goddess worship. That's where the goddess worship starts from. That's where, and you can trace it all the way down to Mitzrayim. Mitzrayim is one of the cultures that really traces it really very good, that, that links with this Bible and also verifies that Moshe was learning all the wisdom of the Egypts. Mitzrayi, not just one Egypt, upper and lower. And Adam called his wife's name Hawa, or Eva, Hawan, Hawa, right? Because she was the mother of all living, right? That, that's, that, that, that's his rationale. That's not saying that it's true, because how could she be mother of all living? There were living creatures, everything. Did she give birth to them? No, she didn't give birth to none of them, right? She didn't give birth to nothing. And notice this. In verse 21, just to close out this right here. In verse 21, it says, To Adam also and to Ishto, his wife, did Yahuwah Elohim make coats of skins. Why did he do that? It's not because their nakedness was bad. It's because their, 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 their head was bad. Their, their mind was bad. Because they did a bad thing. Because Adam, Adam did a bad thing. All right? Remember the woman, she was straightforward. She said, I was I was beguiled. The man could have said, I messed up. I broke your commandment. Forgive me. He could have said that. He never said that. He never, never, ever, never said that. He blamed God or Elohim, Yahweh Elohim, and he blamed the woman. This is like what a lot of these dudes do, you know what I mean? So we're not defending all the other Hebrew Israelites and all the other Bible people, you know what I mean? Because this is the same thing they do, 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 you know what I mean? Because we heard that's all because of the woman and so on and so on. And then we read this and said, wait, how can it all be because of the woman? The man was the one who was commanded. The man was standing right there. He didn't say nothing. 
you know. And then when he's asked what what to go on, he says it, he blames he blames Yahweh, Jehovah Elohim, and the woman. He takes no responsibility. Mm. So Christ is the last Adam. Okay. To Adam also and his wife did Yahuwah Elohim make coats of skins and clothe them. Now, if they were so wise, if they were so wise, all right, then why did they not make coats of skins for themselves? Do, do you know about making garments? Any of y'all make clothing? You know what I mean? Sometimes it's hard for for some people to sew just just, just sew a little tear or, or or when some thread comes out. You know what I mean? You know, sewing takes a little skill. W where's the wisdom there? Remember, it was the tree desired to make one's wife. It was a tree desired, her, her desire, right? It, it, it didn't say it make you wise. Because if it made you wise, why would you put fig fig leaves on yourself? You see what I'm saying? Something that's dying. That's dead and dying, right? Right? And then we'll get into this as we pick up on, on this right here. Verse 22, where it says, Jehovah Elohim said, Behold, the man has become as one of us. Because people say, Well, who are the us? Who are the us to know good and evil? All right? Well, of course, that's the, well, who is that? Well, we're going to get into who, who is he speaking to, to know good and evil. Because notice, according to the scripture, the only one that was called good was every day of creation. The creation was called good. And when man, humanity was made, they were called very good. So that means angels, there are good angels, there are bad angels. The overs that, that no, no doubt know good and bad. But anyway, to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also the tree of life and eat and live forever. Now, if you say, well, well, I thought he was going to die to death. Live forever in an ucked up condition? Would you want to live forever in a messed up condition? They say some people, when they get diseases and get real sick or whatnot like that, you know, they call it euthanasia or whatever, they want to die and there's a whole law and people say, no, don't, they shouldn't kill them because they get into religious stuff or whatever. I think in some conditions, maybe some people should be allowed to, to go. Why should they continue to suffer in that suffering state? That's the condition. That Yahweh Elohim is saying concerning Adam Wahewa, Adam and Hawa, right? That if they stay in this condition, they'll be forever in this. In other words, in that case, death becomes almost as a bracha, like as a blessing in that sense. Because when you're in a condition where things are continually getting worse, and we read on the narrative, we read the next chapter, you know, she had her two sons. Right? One kills the next one. You know what I mean? One becomes a murderer. You know, it's just heartache and, 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 and all of that is because I say once again that man, Adam, the Ben Elohim, did not do what he was supposed to do. He did not do what he was supposed to do. Right? And he allowed his woman to get tricked out. So anyway, it's a little bit longer than I thought, brothers and sisters. So is Nepal Shaddai right? Um, no, she's not right what she's saying about the scripture in, in the true way, in the real way the scripture is according to the Hebrew. But it is one of the philosophies that was circulating even in ancient days, so forth and so on. And basically what she brings forward there is basically the Nahash. She basically so says so. But anyway. Shalom, Chavarim. Shalom. Check out more in the description. More to come. Jah willing.